We strive to understand catalysis on a fundamental level and apply it to sustainable chemical technologies. So that can include the upgrading of biorenewable feedstocks, it can include um, making existing processes cleaner, more efficient, um, and it includes uh, renewable energy conversion. One important strand in our research is um, the fundamental understanding of the catalysis itself, and, and that is not a, a trivial thing. Um, there are many catalytic systems and many catalysts known, uh, and people know how to apply them and what they get out at the other end, but there's not necessarily a lot of mechanistic and fundamental understanding how the catalyst affects these transformations. So here we use um, a new technique, or an adaption of NMR uh, spectroscopy, that allows us to investigate catalytic systems under realistic conditions. So this is exactly how they work and how you would apply them in practice, in industry uh, or, or in a research lab. This is called flow NMR spectroscopy and it basically is, is nothing but you have a reaction vessel under conditions X and you pump an aliquot of that solution through the NMR continuously. You don't change the conditions and you analyze the reaction as it goes in real time under normal conditions. Our collaboration with Broker started three years ago now, where we showed Broker what we have been doing in the area and, and, and they then showed us their interest in the area and we very quickly realized that there's a lot of overlap. It's very important for us as, as users of the technique, uh, of the spectrometer, um, to know what it can and what it can't do. And quite often we came to points where we wanted to do something, it was not part of the standard routine, and then we needed to go back to Broker and ask them, could it be made so that it does this and that for us? And they were very responsive for this. That allowed us to modify the technique to the specific questions that we had in the chemistry. So we didn't have to adapt our science to the technique, but we were able to actually shape the technique to suit our needs. And that is a rare relationship to have, I think, um, but it's a very important one. For us, it's really opened the door to a whole lot of new findings. Um, all these dream reactions that before we thought, oh, if we could only see what's happening at this point in the reaction, or if we could only understand what that color change means. Uh, we now can do that, we can look into this, so we can do these, I call them mechanistic probe experiments, where we um, add things in different orders and watch the, the real-time response in the spectra. And it doesn't necessarily tell you everything in the first experiment, but it always shows you something else that you haven't seen before. And then if you, if you do a couple of experiments and, and you put the results logically together, it, it just draws a much clearer picture of what's going on. Now I think it, what we're doing here can inform many different areas of catalysis, but it's specifically exciting to think about systems which are notoriously difficult to monitor under working conditions, um, such as electrocatalysis or photocatalysis or photoredox catalysis, uh, which are systems which only operate when you apply an external driving force. So you, you can't easily do that in, in any analytical technique. Um, but with our flow setup, you can, you can do these reactions. You can drive them continuously, you can keep them in their, in their native state all the time. And, and you can withdraw a small sample, very quickly analyze it and pump it back without disturbing the system. So in that area, I think it's, it will be especially illuminating. I really see our research as sort of a basic method development in, in one sense that gives people a new tool to do what they already do uh, in a much better, in a more informed way.